everyone welcome again to another video of driving tv it's a pleasure being with you guys today and have the opportunity to share this mini tutorial for all those beginner drivers who want to begin their driving lessons but don't know where to start or how today i will share with you guys the most important and essential things that you should know in order to kickstart your driving experience we will go over controls and their functions but of an automatic vehicle if you are in another country and happen to need information for functions of a transmission for a manual car in our channel we have other videos for that as well so again this specific video is only for an automatic vehicle which is what majority of people use nowadays so say no more and let's get started right away with this video and I hope it really helps you guys and well if it does remember to leave a comment below because we really appreciate your feedback. Thank you and let's get started. So when beginning your practices, that is when you made that decision that you're ready to get out there on the road and you just want to learn how to drive whenever you're ready. The next step is to start thinking on how you will start this whole process to begin with. Are you going to begin your practices with a certified driving instructor or will you want to do this whole process on your own with somebody like a family member or a friend that actually knows how to drive? and has a license. If doing this on your own is your choice, then this video is for you. So let's begin with something very simple. Before sitting in an automatic vehicle to begin driving, you'll need to understand the function and how it works appropriately. So let's begin with the easiest part, which is positioning yourself adequately in the driver's seat. What you need to know is that the driver's seat is an adjustable seat. So it's meant for the driver to find his correct position for reaching the pedals and the steering wheel of the car safely and comfortably. As you can see here, we have the adjusting levers on the lateral side of the driver's seat. You can play with it, moving the seat back, forward, up or down until you find the position that best works for you. We also have on the side by your door the seat belt, which you'll find behind your shoulder. Now, seat belt goes over the shoulder and over your lower abdominal region as shown here. You'll see a red little piece color where you'll be able to buckle it. You'll always have to immediately place your seat belt on right after adjusting your seat. Reminder that this is very important for you to have on before driving. Don't forget, you will adjust your seat and once comfortable, make sure your legs reach the pedals, that your hands reach the steering wheel and then the seat belt, of course, is on. This is very important. You must feel comfortable. Now, remember that an automatic car is only operated with your right leg. So your left leg will remain resting on the side. Now, people ask me all the time, so why should you only drive with one leg? And I'll explain this. I promise I will. But later on in the video, because right now, I want you guys to focus and learn the functions and how to proceed. I highly recommend that you make sure that your leg is not fully stretched out. You shouldn't have to make an effort to reach your pedals. Both your legs should be slightly bended. And one of them should be comfortably resting over the pedal while the other one on its side. Now, if you have any family members or a friend who is with you during these practices, because you cannot do this alone, you need somebody who has experience and a driver's license already, that person would probably will recommend you how to position yourself appropriately and give you more tips on how to proceed. All right, so we have adjusted the seat. Our seatbelt is on. And now let's talk about the pedals the accelerator 
and the brakes. So this one in the center is called the brakes. And the one that's on the right corner is the accelerator. So for best coordination and also for the best comfort, it's best to operate these pedals with only the right leg, one leg. I've had many people tell me that they know drivers who use both their legs. This can be done, but it's much, much more harder and less safe to operate and coordinate both. My recommendation for you is to learn how to do this using only your right leg, just like the majority of people do. Leave your left leg resting on the side as you safely use your right one for both accelerator and the brakes. Do not try to improvise. Do this the most simple and effective way there is. I want you guys to be able to drive safely and have the best experience driving. This is why I highly recommend, once again, to use one leg. Now, these pedals are used in a very simple and gentle way. So, applying very soft pressure with your right foot does the trick. When using your brakes, you will rest your back foot. And with the upper side of your foot, just like I'm showing you here, you will softly press down on the brakes. Never press upon the pedals hard. You will press slowly and softly on your brakes as you test it and see how much pressure you need to apply on it to proceed as you are driving. If you press the accelerator, for example, way too aggressively or way too hard, the car will take off and do an aggressive acceleration, which you do not want. In your practices, you will learn how much of a pressure these pedals need and you will start to get the hang of it. And whatever works for you in order to move your vehicle at a safe pace. So try to be patient. Try accelerating, then braking, then accelerating a few times until you get the hang of it. Join your practices. Okay, so now here we got the steering wheel. So let's move on and talk about the steering wheel. The steering wheel moves in a circular motion towards the right or towards the left. These movements are done also very gently without pressure or aggressively. It's mostly understanding how and when to turn the steering wheel, which we have been and gone over in previous videos. So here I will only demonstrate how it functions. You operate the steering wheel with both your hands comfortably, one hand on time nine o'clock and the other hand on three o'clock. You will be moving softly the steering wheel like shown here. As you can see, by moving the steering wheel, you're moving the front wheels of your vehicle. Many of you have asked me if the steering wheel moves the back wheel as well, and it definitely does not. It only moves the front wheels, just like shown here. So now, if you can see here on the side of the steering wheel, you'll find a small lever, which is the blinker or the blink lever, or also known as the turn signaling lever. This is very, very important because it's what you will use before turning while driving. You must always turn your signal on to notify other drivers what direction you will be taking. If I push this lever up, I will be notifying other vehicles that I will be making a right turn or will be switching to the right lane. If I pull the lever down, I will be notifying that I'm making a left turn or switching to the left lane. So remember, up is for the right and down is for the left. You will find this lever in the same place for all of the vehicles. Okay, so make sure you do not forget that the blinker lights or turn signal, it's always going to be on your side of the steering wheel on this side. Now, do not get confused because on the other side of the steering wheel, guess what? We have another lever. Now, do not get confused because on the other side of the steering wheel, on your right side, there's also another lever. But this one is for cleaning your windshield. 
it's very important as well because if you're having trouble seeing due to rain or your window is dirty, then you can move it up or down to clean your window. Now, moving it up or down also determines the intensity. Again, the person that's with you in your practices can explain more how it works and even show you. It's very simple and easy to use. The windshield wipers are very important when driving and having poor visibility. Now, let's get back to the turn signal lever. (laughs) There's many vehicles that have like this ring on the lever that you can twist around and it basically helps you turn on the headlights for bad coverage. So you can have your normal lights, which are more dim, than the headlights for a more bright view. You have to know that many cars, depending on its manufacturer, has to change this feature of, of the way the lights go and function. It comes differently. When it comes to lights, AC function, as well as mirrors, it all depends on the vehicle. So once you get your car, you'll become familiar with all these functions and features and where they're located. In this video, we have been focusing mostly on the basic controls that you'll find in every single vehicle in the same place, located in the same place. So we started off with the accelerator, the brakes, the steering wheel, and the turn signals, which basically every single car have this. They're the main functions and like the, the main things, right? And well, now that we had covered all of these important functions and the controls let's proceed to one of the most important parts which is the gear stick so the letters and what do each of these letters mean this this right here is known as the gear stick so here we can see that the first letter for example is p and the car is currently in p which means the car is parked not in motion it's not moving In this position with the P is when you're able to turn on your vehicle once you're inside and positioned. You should always have it on P parked before starting your car. Don't not forget this. (laughs) Next letter that we're going to see, it's going to be R, which R means reverse, going backwards. Your car is moving back. If you place it on R, the vehicle will move backwards. Um, The next letter is N, which means neutral, which means the car is not doing anything. It's just basically dead. It's not moving. This one is used in very, very rare occasions, to be honest. It's used when you're taking your car to a car wash and you just have to put it on neutral so it could just be moved. (laughs) And then... Also, for instance, it breaks down and then you have to push a car. That's another uh, moment when you will need your car neutral. Not really very important, but it's good that you guys know at least. Now, moving on to the letter D, which stands for driving. This means that your car will be moving forward. It's what you'll use when you will begin to drive. The other, the other letters and numbers that you might find aren't really important to know as of right now because these are mainly used for going up hills or in snow, things like that, which you don't really need unless you live in places like that. Now, the basic and most important letters are P, parking, R, reverse, and N, neutral, and obviously D for drive. So basically, these are the most important things that you need to remember when it comes to the gear stick. It's the basics. It's what you need to know. It's very, very important. But moving on, now I want you to pay very close attention because this part is actually also very, very important. There's a coordination that needs to be made or is made between the pedals and the gear stick. So in order for you to change gears, you need to press down on the brakes. If you don't press down on the brakes like this, you will not be able to change the car gears. So, for example, if I want to move and change from driving to any other letter like R, reverse, then I'll need to press down on the brakes first and then change the gear. Many cars, not all, have this little small button behind the gear stick, which 
you need to push at the same time, you pull the gear stick and that's the way you change it. But again, not all cars have this. Not every single car has this. I know a lot of cars, especially the modern ones that do not have this. So as I said, you press down on the brake softly and then pull the gear stick to your desired letter, just like it's being shown right here. Now, let's talk about how to turn on your vehicle. So proceeding with turning on button, because right now, after you accommodate your seats and you accommodate the seat belt and all of that, the next thing that you will do is turn on your car. And for many cars that are modern nowadays, just turn on with a button that you press while other car models and these days still use a key. And that's fine. So for those modern models that have buttons, to turn on your car, you will first have to press on the brakes with your foot and then push the button in order for the car to turn on. You have to do this while being on P parked, of course. Now, if you still have a key, the simple thing is inserting the key, then twisting or turning the key forward and pay attention to the sound of your engine. You should notice right away the car starting. Every time that the car starts, you will notice the lights, and the engine. It's very easy to hear and notice. Practice as much as you can or as much as you want until you figure it out because it's quite easy to learn. Our last thing is adjusting the mirrors. I've received a lot, a lot of questions in regards to the mirrors and how to be able to have a better view from the driver's perspective. And the seat, you should adjust your mirror in a way that you're able to see everything behind you and barely see your own vehicle. That's how you should adjust your mirrors. You should see half of the pavement and half of the horizon. Here's an example. You should see only a little portion of your car. You should have a clear view behind you at all times. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the rear view mirror, which is also very, very, very important because that's how you're going to be able to see everything behind you. So the rear view mirror should have also a very clear view of the street and all the vehicles behind you at all times, as I'm showing here in the video. You should be able to adjust that and um, just make yourself comfortable and be able to see everything behind you comfortably. So we have our emergency brake here. And honestly, if you live in an area where you have no hills, this emergency brake isn't quite as important. You should only use this if you will be parking your vehicle uphill, for example. But if you live in an area where it's just flat and you don't have any hills, then honestly, this is not something that you should be um, worried about. But it's good that you guys have an understanding and are clear what this is. And uh, with that being said, guys, this video has indeed come to an end. And I really hope that it was really helpful for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And also, we have just opened a Instagram account. For those of you that are interested in following us there, then that would be amazing. Thank you. Make sure you leave your feedback because it's very important and have a great day.